What's up? What's up? It's your man, Jimmy Chan. All right. So today we're talking about measures of central tendency. So we're really talking about mean, median, and mode. So first, let's talk about the mean. Well, the mean, right, the issue is that we have two different means here. One is a population mean, and we have to differentiate that with so-called sample mean. Okay, actually that's hard to see, isn't it? So let's go ahead and pick a different color here. Let's go ahead and pick blue. Okay, now if you notice the population mean has a different symbol than the so-called um, population mean. So the population mean has the uh, notation of mu. Okay, it looks like a U, like a cursive U, but it's called mu, all right? While the sample mean is just gonna be X bar, okay? And we gotta differentiate it between the two of those. So we gotta make sure we know the difference. Now, the other part that's different is that what's divided by, right? So the N is still the number of observations and capital N is also the number of observations. However, the difference is that the big N is for population, while the lowercase n is for the sample. All right, And we have to kind of respect that, and we got to know what in the world we're actually using. Okay, So for example, this class right here. So in this class, this class only has 10 students. So the population of this class is only 10. So it wouldn't be a sample. Now, if we were talking about the scores of the school, then this class might be a sample, right? But then it's not really random. It is picked, which is not very good, you know, in terms of statistically speaking, all right? So if we were to find the mean of this class, that means we're finding the population mean of this class. The process is still the same. We still add up all the numbers and divide it by the number of numbers there are. So that's what this symbol is saying right here is the sum, sum of all the observations divided by the number of numbers there are, which is 10 of them. So let me go ahead and say, okay, so I'm gonna find mu. Mu is equal to, so what I'm gonna have to do now is actually bring that down, uh, is that I know that there is a total of 10 students in this class. So the capital N is gonna be 10, all right? However, I need to write all of these numbers in here. So it would be 82 plus, let me zoom in, it'd be easy. Uh, it's hard to see those numbers. 77 plus 90 plus 71 plus 62 plus 68 plus 74 plus 84 plus 94 plus 88. All right, so I can extend that, no big deal. Now let's take a look. Let's actually move this 10 over a little bit. So, so what you're gonna find is that when you do this, you will find that mu is actually gonna equal to 79. So the class or the population mean of this class is going to be 79, okay? So let me put that all the way over here so we don't mistake that for the so-called sample mean. So just the label itself is gonna tell you that this is population, which we're talking about this, and not the sample, okay? However, if we wanted to take a sample, we should take a random sample, right? We're not saying, you know what, Michelle is a nice student, so we're gonna pick Michelle, or Dave is, is, is a great student, uh, he should be involved. Uh, Joel doesn't really get to a lot of you know, choices, so we're gonna pick Joel as well. So we can't do that because we want to make sure it's random. So we're gonna do that in your TI-84, what you can do is hit math. So under the math, let me do that in red here. When you hit math, you will see this menu. Well, it's not under this menu here because this is just math. 
there is four other categories here. It's going to be under probability. So you're going to toggle over to probability, right? No matter if you want to use the arrow or whatever you want to do, but you want to get to probability or you can actually there's not much else you can do because it's not a choice down here so you can't use the number so you actually have to toggle over so that this is highlighted now under probability you have these choices here and you want this choice right here which is what i have right there so let me go ahead and change that to blue so that you see that i want that choice right there so you can either use your arrows and toggle down until you get to here and hit enter or you can just hit the number five and then you'll hit enter and when you hit enter you'll get this part and then you have to enter these numbers what do those numbers mean and that is the part that we need to kind of get right okay so the lower net limit so we have a lower limit and lower limit just means the smallest number we have. So when we look here on this, these choices here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So the smallest number we have is a one. So that's the reason why in the lower limit, we chose one, okay? And then we have an upper limit. Upper limit means the largest number we have, which is exactly why I chose that part right so when we choose these the nice part is that we can look at okay how many of these students do we want to pick right if you want to pick four three five whatever so we ch i chose to pick five so i said okay i'll from one through ten pick five numbers So that's why I put in five, okay? So I wanna pick five numbers, all right? So in other places, you might see the pick as in N. How many of them do you want? And when I put those in, what you saw, what you will see, I should say, is that you will, when you hit enter here, you will get this here. Well, you won't necessarily get this right here, right? I happen to got these numbers. So these, this is a random number generator. So chances are your, your five numbers aren't going to match my five numbers here. Okay. So I have two, one, six, nine, ten. So what that's telling me is saying, okay, if I'm going to pick at random, chances are I, I'm going to choose apparently two, one, although that doesn't seem very random, right? That doesn't seem very random at all. So two, one, six, nine, and 10. So those are the five that my calculator randomly selected those five particular ones, which is a little suspect, but it's okay, we'll, we'll deal with it, okay? So, for me to find the X bar, oopsies, I would have to take those five numbers, 82 plus 77 plus 68 plus 94, oopsies, I'm running out of room, so let me go ahead and erase this. And let me see if I can move all of this over. Nope, I cannot, but it's okay. Then I'm just gonna move this over. Oopsies. Eh. There we go. So my X bar is gonna equal to it was 82 plus 77 plus 68 plus 94 plus 88 and divide that by five. So let's go ahead and see what that comes out to be. So I have 82 plus 
77 plus 68 plus 94 plus 88. Double check the numbers, divide that by five, and what I get is that my X bar is equal to 81.8. So if you notice that my sample mean is going to differ from my population mean, right? So, and it's not differing by a lot. I mean, this is a great sample to kind of look at what's going on in the class, right? This is just below B, just almost close to B, and this is definitely a B. So it'll be interesting to see when you do a random ge number generator, what sample mean you will come up with, all right? And um, so let's continue on to measures of median, okay? So the median is the number in the middle, right? But before you call it the number in the middle, notice that median is known as oops, M, capital M, okay? So first, in order to look at the number in the middle, we need to arrange these in ascending order, meaning I'm going to take these numbers right here and order them from least to greatest. And the way I like to do this is I'm looking for numbers. I have 179, looks like the lowest number. I'm going to check that off. Then I'm going to look and say, oh, we got 201. Check that off. 206. Check that off. 208. Check that off. Let me see here. Was it 217? Check that off. 222. Check that off. 240. Check that off. And then the other two, so I need some more space here. So I'm going to bring it down here so it's easier, so I have more space. So 257. And then 284. Right? So when I look at this, I can look at it as, okay, the ends, then I have these two, then I have these two, then I have these two. So I see that I have a number in the middle. Whoa. All right. So with that being said, that means my median is equal to 217. Okay. So... The other question that you should be asking is, okay, what if I had even number of numbers, right? So if I had even number of numbers, then what will happen is, let's say, for example, I just use, so let me see here. Um, let's say I decide to use, repeat some of these numbers, but I only take like the first four numbers, right? So let's say I take just the first four numbers over up here. Right, so it's even, right? So I do this to try to get to the center, and what I'm noticing is that my M is here in the middle. So what I would want to do is find the average of that. So 201 plus 206 and divide that by two. Okay, so when I do that, 201 plus 206, divide that by 2, and I get 203.5 as my median here if I had only these four points. So if it's even, you're going to have to just say, okay, I need to take the average of those two numbers in the middle. If it's odd, it's easy because it's just a number in the middle, all right? So what happens if the mean and median are substantially different? So notice that this is substantially different, right? So if it's substantially different, this is what happens, right? It's gonna, if the mean is way less than the median, then it's really a skewed left, all right? And if they're the same, then, or virtually the same, roughly the equal, then they're symmetrical. And if, they are, if the mean is way more than the median, then it's skewed right, okay? 
So anyways, let's go continue on here. So here we have 50, 50 randomly sampled, so 50 randomly sampled babies, okay? So this is saying sampled. So I know I'm looking for the sample mean. So one of the things that we can do is put this into the calculator, okay? So when we look at it, we go, okay, so first thing we got to do is we have to type all of this into a list. In order to get to that list, we would have to hit stat on our calculator. Okay, we have to hit stat on our calculator. And when we hit stat, we'll see this menu right here. Now the edit is already highlighted and that's exactly what we want. So I want this anyways. All right, that's exactly what I want. So perfect. So I can either hit one or I can hit enter and it will bring me up to something like this. Oopsies. It'll give me something like this where I can enter all of my values on that list. There will be 50 of them. So what you will see here is that the very last value is gonna be L1 parentheses five zero. Okay, and that will be your very last value. So be careful when you're when you're looking at that. Okay, after you do that, you can now go back to stat. And then what you're going to do is go to calc. which is gonna be a menu on top, and you're gonna go into a one var stats. Okay, so that's gonna be choice, choice one. So I probably shouldn't even call this calc because it's just a choice, right? So one var stat, And you're going to hit enter. So when you hit enter, what will come up is this, is this, uh, actually the first screen will look like this. The second screen will look like this. Okay. So just so you guys know, this will always show up as a X bar because when you enter into the calculator, it doesn't know if you're entering a population or you're entering a sample. So you're gonna have to determine if it's an X bar or a mu. You're gonna have to decide on that, okay? So here, if you notice, and this is gonna be X bar because this told me it is 50 randomly sampled babies. So I know that this is a sample. So here I can see that my X bar is right there. That is my mean. My sample mean, okay? Now look at this though, check this out. What do you see right here? Right, that is my median. All right, so I don't even have to count spaces, none of it. it. The calculator can actually show me all of that. Now, question is, is this substantial, right? So that's the part that we have to kind of look at. Is that substantial? Now, they're both seven pounds, right? These babies are both seven pounds, saying the median is seven pounds. They, well, I've a little more than seven pounds, and the sample mean is also saying over seven pounds, right? So it might not be considered substantial. So again, the mean and then the median right? 
describe the shape of the distribution. So they're talking about this shape up here, right? So if we determine that this is not very substantial, right? Because they're both kind of seven pounds. It's not like the mean said it's seven and a half pounds and the median said it was 10 pounds. Then it's kind of way off. So what kind of shape is it? I'm going to say, I'm going to go ahead and say they're symmetrical. Right? Or symmetric, right? So in terms of which central which measure of the central te tendency is better described for the typical birth weight i'm going to say both right so now if it was let's say skewed right or skewed left i would probably say the median is a better judge because the median is telling me what's really in the center Hence, central tendency, the tendency of being centered, right? Where the mean is kind of moved over to the right, and over here, the mean is a little moved over to the left, right? So that's what I would say. But since it's symmetrical, I'm just going to say both, all right? So there we go. So let's go ahead and go on to this. And all this is trying to say is, hey, here's a mention. Oh, the mode, all right? Mode is the variable that most frequent observations okay so meaning more than one things happen at, at this at, at you know over and over again that's a mode all right so whatever observation that occurs most frequently so if, it, if I have a set of data the set of data could have no mode so I could have all different numbers I could have one mode where one number occurs more than once and more often than any other number and in, in this book, it says that there could be more than one mode. So we could have five numbers, all of them occur twice, then all five of those numbers are considered a mode, okay? But obviously, if they're all different numbers, then there is no mode, all right? And then this is kind of a summary of everything that we kind of learned just now, all right? Well, I hope that helps. If there's any questions, please let me know. See ya. Bye.